get you some Sal. I'm Ben. And I'm Tiffany. Oh, things are a little different here over at Comic Pop. We wanted to invite you to join us on the new refaced image of Comic Pop. We've got a studio space, and now we're going to try it out, see how this goes. Today we're going to talk about Civil War II from Brian Michael Bendis with David Marquez on art. <laughs> Oh no. Oh yes, we're doing it. <laughs> Figured, you know what, big episode, we're changing. No! no. Get, get back here. Well, should we celebrate? Yeah. With a good book? What are you talking about? Civil War Two. it's great. So And like Civil War, we're wearing red, white, and blue. Yeah, there you go. Very patriotic. Good couple months after 4th of July. Yeah. I'm the X-Men. Nice. They, uh, they're a little bit in this. Well, then we should shun you, <laughs> as is American history. Right? Yes. Exactly. Shun me. That's the American way. So, I read a few of these. Yes, you did. Uh, but that's okay, because... But just, but just that, and then I just let it all fall out of my head. Good. That's, yeah. uh, that's the way to go. <laughs> yeah, I remember us only covering a couple issues. Yeah, yeah. yeah. On Off the Rack. We, uh, we did talk about it a little bit, but I figured, why not finish it? <laughs> hey, that's fine. You know? Because you read it, not me. I did. I did read it. So let's talk about it a little bit. <laughs> cool. Civil War Two. Uh, Marvel was interested. There was a movie coming out called Captain America: Civil War, Ooh. and right. so they Marvel was like, "Oh, it's based off of the classic superhero epic Civil War, redefined event comics, as we've done on back issues as well." But uh, it it changed the entire superhero landscape. It changed Marvel Comics irreparably forever, and so maybe. In honor of Civil War, the movie, we could put out a prestige format of Civil War 1. You know, I mean, it's written by Mark Miller. It's drawn by Steve McNiven. It's a gorgeous yeah. book. Only seven parts. Not hard to, to really encompass. We could we could print a, an oversized edition. Maybe a couple, a couple of really great sketch ideas. Maybe do a little... A little fan. No, let's just do a whole other event called Civil War 2 that people will buy when they go see the movie. Because that's how it works. Because they have the same name. They have the same name. Kids... Adults, they go, they see the Captain America movie. Then they think to themselves, oh my god, I gotta get these comic books everybody's talking about. They go into the store, they see on the shelf, oh, that has the name of the thing I went to go see, but it's got a two next to it. That means it's new and special. That means it's the sequel to the movie I saw. Right, so I'll go pick it up. And it features characters that you've never seen before if you're watching only the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Like Carol Danvers, who's a central figure in this book. A.K.A. Captain Marvel. But who will soon be in the Cinematic Universe. That's right, she's well, coming out. Soon-ish. In Infinity War. Right, so... Uh, so, their, hmm. so their plan was, we're going to do a thing that mimics the movie. But we won't have the two main characters. Only no. one of them. Captain America is practically a footnote in this whole story. That said, if you were reading Nick Spencer's Captain America, it provides a whole lot of subtext. And apparently and reportedly, a way better version of Civil War II. I didn't read it, so we're not going to talk about it. You want to point out all the, ba all the background, all the subtext, all the extra stuff from Captain America in the comments? Why don't you just forget it? And Nick Spencer does to Captain America in this what everyone else did to Boba Fett in yes. Return of the Jedi. Right? What? Where it's like <laughs> Boba Fett, right? He does two things. He, uh, he is handed Han Solo and Carbonite after Vader does all the work, and then he gets eaten by the Sarlacc pit. Right, but Those are the two things this guy does, and that everybody is like, Boba Fett's the coolest, most yeah. epic, awesome bounty hunter in the galaxy. No. Prove it. What, what? In what celluloid version of the character does he do anything? Okay, well, it's not on the film, but there is this novella. Wait! Well, ah! Exactly! <laughs> right, now, to be fair, Cap does have a long history of doing things and being cool and punching people. Right, at least Captain America has a precedent for being right. cool. But and he is important in this because he's a, he's a plot point. Is he still old at this point? No, they fixed him. Okay. Nick Spencer uh, had Kobik, the living cosmic cube, make him young again. And also make him Hydra. Well, yeah, we're not gonna... But that's what that. he is. Oh, Shh, but don't, don't tell anyone in this because they don't but, know. But don't tell Bendis. Because he doesn't care. <laughs> and uh, so, yeah, let's get into Civil War II. Of course, cool. Civil War II begins with a free comic book day issue. So if you didn't get that... Then you have no context for what's happening. And you can't buy it. No, it's hey, free. Jennifer Walters is being an attorney. Yeah, you won't see that for very long. She uh, She's defending an old uh, supervillain who is like <clears throat> dealt up a hard hand. He's having a hard time. And she loses because the jury doesn't give a shit about his like hardships or any legitimacy. So 
She yeah. doesn't end it with it ain't easy being green, and <laughs> the jury just laughs and just hands her the not guilty. Verdict. <laughs> yeah, no. It's like, oh no, she's using the ain't the, the Kermit defense. <laughs> we're we're boned. No, no, she does not. But do that. he's not green. No, but like she's she's no, trying to I connect know. to the if audience. He was green. That would make sense. He's the one that's down on his luck. He's the one who had the hand dealt to him. That sucks. Maybe he's got a lot of money. I know. He's got the green. I'm just I'm grasping at straws. <laughs> <laughs> then we go to Ohio State University, where there's a bunch of twenty-somethings, like, <laughs> and they're all they're they're okay. So during this time, uh, their uh, Black Bolt released a Terrigen cloud. Actually, I think there were two clouds. Wait. Black Bolt did this? I yeah. thought it was like some... Oh, it was like a villain. naturally occurred... No, it was Black Bolt. He's like, screw it, we need more Inhumans. Release the clouds! So release these wow. two roving... Yeah, like... So then... <laughs> so then he... What's the dog's name? Lockjaw. Yeah, yeah, they just fed him chili. Yeah, and then Lockjaw just ripped ass and then left. <laughs> we might as well have. I mean, it, they, that would be about as well-received <laughs> as anything that what? happened in uh, Inhumans Wait, did they time. engineer this cloud? Like, they had it was actually a Terrigen bomb that the humans had kind of like as uh, a last you can't say that word a bomb oh, oh, get him <laughs> Who? who's, who's gonna get me <laughs> we got people the thought police move in so uh, anyway Black Bolt releases this cloud there's two clouds there, and, and in like uh, on the beach remember that book <laughs> when you were in 8th grade and you had to read this book it was about clouds of uh, nuclear uh, fallout that were like roving across the world and nope. like this last civilization, okay, well anyway, there are these two clouds uh -huh. and they're turning people into inhumans, or as I like to call them, gremlins, because <laughs> they uh, are transformed and then they go into cocoons <laughs> and when they come out, they it, become goblins. It's perfect! It's, oh my god! They are gremlins and they got rules. <laughs> Screw the inhumans. But anyway, so there's these, there's these clouds and uh, actually uh, Cyclops winds up uh, throwing um, one of his like lesser uh, popular x-men into one of the clouds and then he makes it go away and for that he is called uh mutant hitler because what happened was after the secret wars time jump uh they established this like, status quo where like cyclops did something and everyone hates him for it and they're like what did cyclops do and well as it turns out like they didn't know and they didn't figure out what there was they didn't have a plan they just were like, let's let's let the status quo right now is it's eight months later, and Cyclops did something real bad, and he's Hitler now, and as it turns out, all he did was take a flyer and they drop him into the cloud. He uses so, like, mutant powers to change it, right? Yeah, and it turns into a regular cloud and makes it go away. Meanwhile, there's another Inhuman like Terrigen cloud also roaming around, them, but the Inhumans were like, no, we need more Inhumans. Why are you doing... so because of that? He's hit, he's Hitler, and it was but like it... Elixir died. Oh yeah. Okay, so Storm couldn't just like That's push it into the thinking. atmosphere, right? Like yeah, but then he wouldn't be a bad guy for doing it, except he was already here's the thing. Okay, I am sure Professor X has sacrificed like countless mutants. Oh man, Professor X, no, Professor X is the close is closer to mutant Hitler than Cyclops. Well, okay, so wait. And who cares about Elixir? Nobody. That's not why they're calling him that. I bet they're calling him that because he stopped the the Terrigenesis, correct? Well, his like, name is Elixir because it's mutant power. No, I meant no. It's like, oh, oh, yes, it's, it's, they're calling him that because he he curtailed the development of new Inhumans. Okay, do the Inhumans ever say, "Hey, we think you have the Inhuman gene. Would you like to be an Inhuman?" Right. Uh, they would, they've done that. Would you like to have the choice to be? An oh inhuman no. Or not? Wait, so the Inhumans gassed everybody. <laughs> and they're not Hitler, right? <laughs> I'm just asking the question. So, so, but it doesn't harm people. Uh, I mean, like it turns them into cocoons. No, like they, regular people who aren't. Inhumans. Unlike the show where it could kill you, no, yeah. no, it doesn't hurt people. And there's still a cloud. But it does kill mutants, and that's why they needed to get rid of it. So, Wait, it kills mutants. Oh yeah. Oh, it gives them a disease that kills them. Okay, so instead of potentially just. Like, figuring out a way to tell who is an Inhuman and who isn't. Yes. And then being like, hey, you're an Inhuman. Pit. Right. Or, even if you're gonna be would like, you like to be pit? Right, even if you don't want, even if we're doing whatever. Yeah, even if we're going to be assholes about it. Yeah, just pit to yeah. you, right? But, like, we don't want to hurt the mutants, because why would we do that? Right. Instead, it's just like, hey, you better pay attention to the weather. Yeah, because that is... you might die. <laughs> if you're a mutant, and what if you don't know? Yeah. What if you're a kid? Well, and the thing about it is, yeah. the reason why that sucks. Well, you're you're you, you don't uh, manifest your mutations. But yeah, but you're still, still a mutant. Oh, I see. Yes. Here's the thing. 
The reason why everyone... <laughs> here's the thing. Shut up. F that. <laughs> but here, here's the other thing. The reason why most people aren't like looking at like why the Inhumans are assholes about it, it's because Marvel was just trying to make it so that the mutants would go away. Oh, you mean so they could do Inhuman stuff and because not they have to pay own Fox. Those and then they realized like people were still going to buy X-Men anyway. So then they were like, well, people bought Avengers vs. X-Men. So let's lead this into Inhumans vs. X-Men. And that way people have to buy Inhuman books so that they can like read about the X-Men and what's going on with that. Yeah, because no one's reading X-Men right now. Right? And it's, yeah, it's not like X-Men sales dipped because people were getting confused between Fox and Marvel. No, they, they're dipping because the quality is just not very good. So there's this cloud roaming around and not a lot of people are too concerned about it. Seemingly. Not especially, no. <laughs> so at Ohio State University, a in fact, a bunch of like 20-somethings were like, here comes the cloud! Let's all go out and get in, and get in, turn into cool monsters and hopefully stuff! Hopefully none of us are mutants! Well, and hopefully none of us will turn into those yeah. humans that like become flipper monsters and stuff. Because there's also some conjecture about whether Lockjaw is a dog or a guy and that like after terra genesis he turned into a dog man well i guess that's an excellent question if there are other animals that, that are also affected, inhumans that got affected by other yeah humans. seemingly there are no other inhuman animals which is actually kind of a weird oxymoron thing to which say. i guess means that lockjaw it was, was a, a guy yeah. and uh, i think peter david was the one who made that uh, like maybe lockjaw is a guy and which is even more horrifying because the humans treat him like a dog right. and feed him dog food. And he can't like bang anybody. Or talk. Well, I mean, he can, but it's it's really not okay. No. I want to well, see like an image of, I like, guess. <laughs> I want to see them do like a flashback story where like Lockjaw was like, dude, and he was engaged. And then like, <laughs> it's just, it ends with him like in the present and he teleports like outside of her window and just a single tear like rolls down his jowls. As all of the memories of being human start falling away and he yeah, becomes and he's, more and more a dog. Yeah, and d just obsessed with like chasing tennis balls and like squirrels and, and licking his own ass. Which, by the way, is great. Yeah, if you're a dog, I guess. So yeah. anyway, this cloud is dog. coming, and the uh, and these sweet what? <laughs> the kids are all like it, it, the kids are staging like not a protest, but like a kind of like woo, like a little rally thing, Terrigen party. So they Ooh, all go Coachella. out there. And by the way, yeah, and uh, it's Burning Man for potential humans. So and and the press show up, and they're like, so do you really? Because most people, when the cloud comes, like I don't want. To turn into Lockjaw. So they all like hide until the cloud like rolls by. Yeah, by but the way, you have to have like an airtight area to hide from yeah. this cloud. By the way, world outside your window, Marvel is, like all those roving clouds that turn you into goblins. Yep. God damn it. So, but I like the idea that like some teenagers or 20 somethings are like, yeah, I want to have fucking powers. And you mean to tell me like if I just get caught in a rainstorm, I might have powers? That sounds awesome. So I would go in that cloud. Yeah. I'm not going to lie. Right? Would you go in the cloud? I would not. I have really bad luck. Yeah. You would turn into a fish man or something. Yeah. And I don't mean like, I, me I meant to say fish woman. No. I, I mean you'd become fish a fish man. man. Yeah, I would. You're like, shit. Yeah. So uh, <laughs> Michelle, she goes into a cocoon and then she comes out as a demon monster and just flies away. And they're like, oh, that sucks for Michelle. And Michelle you, was cool. Yeah. And Ulysses. Nobody. And Ulysses... What? Wait, he, does Michelle ever come back? No. Okay. It's Bendis. So then Mich uh, Ulysses changes, and then he comes out of the cocoon, and he's like, no, oh, nothing, nothing happened. And then he no, sees, Nothing happened! You were in a cocoon! Well, he's something like, I didn't happened. turn into a horrible monster. And then he like looks around himself, and he sees that the world is destroyed. And he's like, oh my god. As it turns I destroyed out, the world. Yeah. And Michelle destroyed the world. Right, Michelle like laid waste <laughs> to humanity. Or I have the power to nuke the world and then it doesn't affect me. No, as it turns out, like he can see visions into the future. And seemingly they're pretty accurate. So like he can see into the future, and that's the whole crux of Civil War II. Civil War I was about like whose side are you on? Like, should you register your powers or your identities, like privacy? This one is about like fate, I guess. Well, it, it's about surveillance. Cause it's like What? Because it's about like minority report. You know, like, if I know you're going to do something bad and before, you, you. before you do it, yeah. were you going to do something bad? Because like, I stopped can I, it. Can I actually arrest you for that? Yeah. Because I've just successfully kept you from committing the crime. Right. Yeah. But you're still under arrest. Yeah. Like, I just really screwed up the morality of the situation. And it's like, who... But you're, but but you're still thinking about committing a crime. Right. But, like, also, who cares? Like, 
we we've seen that trope, and science fiction's already handled it. Like having comic books be like, oh, like, well, what if there was a guy? Like, first of all, there are plenty of mutants or other superheroes who can see into the future. Yep. Yeah. Ruined. Like but, the premise is out. They're like, yeah, but this isn't a human who can do it, and he's new. And I, Brian Michael Bendis, have never written a story about that. Right, yet. and he's going on some sort of odyssey. So then uh, we shoehorn in a weird relationship that Carol Danvers has with War Machine, a.k.a. James Rhodes. All right. Apparently, Rhodey and Carol are sleeping together or something. I kind of can see it. Yeah. And the Inhumans show up to tell them, like, hey, we picked up this kid. His name's Ulysses. He can see into the future, and he's got visions. And he... Do they ever test that against another person that can see into the right? future? Right? That'd be cool. No. Be like, hey, you seen this? No. No, I didn't see that. <laughs> That'd be but, great. But if, how do you know then? At least then it would faking. be a right. But it'd be a great way to like make Ulysses more legit or whatever. Or maybe like when Ulysses is transformed into this, okay. like it emits like a psychic bomb and it kills everyone who can do that. At least then you get rid of all the people who can see in the future. Yeah. Of course, then you'd have to kill like people who can like see in the future using magic, like Doctor Strange, for example. Now, hilariously enough, Doctor Strange was going on his own little quest. During this time. Yeah. You want to talk about it a little bit? About the... Okay, so during this time, Doctor Strange is dealing with the death of magic in his Mar in the Marvel Universe, in his universe. Oh. Something has going through and killing magic, hunting it down because it despises magic. So you're saying that Doctor Strange would definitely be able to use magic to do world-changing things. I'm saying that Doctor Strange at this point is trying desperately to keep things together because no one has any powers right now. No one? You mean any sorcerer might not be able to use magic? Um, Scarlet Witch has no magic. Magic has no magic. They all have to use magical items in order to use magic themselves. Oh. And that's kind of it. That's weird. Because later, Doctor Strange, Magic, Scarlet Witch, and everyone else who uses magic simply uses magic to do something really, really big and important. So, the, the Inhumans tell uh, Carol and Rhodey that, like, the, Ulysses had a vision of the world getting destroyed and shit. And it has something to do with Thanos. The reason why Thanos is involved is because Thanos is big. And if people are going to go see the movie, Civil War, they're probably aware of Thanos. So this being a free comic book day issue and everything, we got to get Thanos in the book. Even if Thanos is doing something totally unrelated. You, you mean so that they're also interested in Infinity War? Yeah. So... Uh, then, at Project Pegasus in Mount Athena, New York. Oh, man, I like this project. Right? Yeah, because it's got cool flying birds. It's just a name. It's did, actually an acronym. Did flying horses? No. Yeah. You said flying birds. Did I say flying birds? Yeah. You did. Well, they're horses. <laughs> yeah, they are. <laughs> Sorry, everybody. <laughs> Basically, the blessing of Pegasus. It would be, though. Those are unicorns! <laughs> yeah, but it could oh, be yeah. a blessing for both. Yeah, it would be a blessing A blessing, a blessing a in the miracle. Of... Okay, well, here's... Yeah, it would be a blessing for... Us. But to be fair, I think the unicorn is more sentient than the Pegasus is. I don't know about that. I'm pretty sure it is. Well, some unicorn. Except for Shiro's horse. Yes. Anyway. What's her name? I don't know. Swiftwind. Thank you. So, <laughs> man, you pull that in. I'm just like, I don't know. Here it is. It's Swiftwind. <laughs> so, Thanos has his, his designs on a cosmic cube, which is being kept at Project Pegasus or whatever. Uh, for whatever reason, okay, Thanos is really powerful. Mm -hmm. We've established this numerous times, especially sure. in yes. uh, Infinity War. Yeah. Uh, for no reason, he shows up wearing guns. He bumped into Cable and then stole all of his weapons. He was like, that looks great. You look awesome. Two guns oh, on your no. back. He even has, like, cross straps. Yeah. yeah. To hold the two guns on his back. Yeah, that's it. Like, that's Not to mention the double-handed gun that he's holding right now. He, knew he uses none of them, by the way. Because he's so powerful, he just punches people. So... Uh, he just likes to hold them. Thanos is holding all his guns and he shows up because he wants to steal a cosmic cube. And then a contingent that Carol Danvers got together, I guess thanks to Ulysses' vision, uh, show up. I, I think the idea here is that Thanos was going to show up here and nobody knew about it. Steal the cosmic cube and fuck up, a rea and fuck up reality. Uh, instead, Carol Danvers and A-Force basically show up. Oh, okay. And uh, plus Blue Marvel and War Machine. Is Black Panther there too? Uh, I believe he is. Yeah, there he is. There you go. And the Human Torch. And Dazzler. And Dazzler. She's a member of A-Force. I just, I just like to say Dazzler. So, 
with her dazzle powers. <laughs> <laughs> At least Jubilee thinks I'm cool. So I'm Dazzler. Oh, Thanos fights everybody and he beats everyone's ass and then kills War Machine by punching him real hard. Oh, whoa! What? Yep. By the way, he also like whips Medusa into War Machine as he's firing a bomb, and so the bomb's like trajectory goes off and it hits She Hulk and knocks her into a coma. Oh, because does it like hit her hair? Medusa? It looks like it hits her hair. And it's like... Doink. Yeah, it does. I'm sure it does. Her hair probably like swats it out of the way or something. Probably, probably. No! <laughs> Deflected. Also, so, you're a dirty mutant. She's an inhuman. No, she's an inhuman and she sends it at the mutant. Oh, no, she Hulk's just a regular person. So, Hulk isn't a... Uh, a oh, mutant? Yeah. No, 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 he's gamma radiation. Yeah. yeah. He's just, and actually... He's uh, just mutated from that, but he's not a mutant. Mutations are genetic. <laughs> Anyway. And it didn't affect his genes at all? Well, it did, but not in the same way. Mutants carry the X gene. Uh-huh. It's very specific. Anyway, also She-Hulk isn't the same way. She got no, Yeah, she a got a dr- blood, blood transfusion, transfusion, which yeah. is genetic. Anyway, <laughs> She-Hulk gets bombed into a coma, War Machine dies, and then they beat up Thanos and then arrest him. We don't but see they arrest Thanos. him? Yeah, they keep him in like a holding cell. And then and a bunch of people pose. For a picture nobody takes. It's a flashback to Ulysses being like, oh my god, I'm having these visions. And then humans are like, hey, our convenient cloud made you into a human. And you're not gross and stuff. Also, Wanna we're come all hang here. Out with us? Yeah, and we're all here. So come we're the hang welcoming out party. We yeah. have a fruit basket. Um, this is going to be a, a very probably yes or no question, but did his vision show whether or not Thanos Was going to kill War Machine? It just shows the aftermath of Thanos. And I guess also that like Thanos was going to do that. And also like where he was going to be and when. But not that it was going to screw up and kill War Machine and almost kill She-Hulk. Because like... Well, when... I guess he could, they couldn't see that because it hadn't happened. Right. So his vision is already wrong. Yes. So he can't see the future. Well, anyway... Well, the future's always changing, Ben. Yeah, always in motion. It's the butterfly effect. Ooh, I changed the thing. <laughs> <laughs> what did you change? Oh, you die five seconds later instead yeah. of right now. Yeah, that's right. But so, you got a cool cutscene. Yeah. Then <laughs> everyone basically that matters in the Marvel Universe shows up in Manhattan and it's being like demolished by this celestial. What? I'm sorry, a celestial? Yeah. It just shows up? I believe it's called the Celestial Destroyer, but yes, a celestial. Or a team of Celestials who are to conjuring a Celestial being. So like a typical week in the Marvel Universe. Right. Except Especially that Celestials for... would never do that. Especially for Earth. Where it was like, you know what? Fuck, Fuck it. <laughs> the Celestials would never do this. Or if they did, it would yeah. be way bigger of a deal. So all the Celestials attack. Then the Avengers show up and they fight it. And then Wait, Thor... All and the, the Celestials or just that one? Oh, just these, just oh, okay. these few. These guys. Yeah. And then the rest of the cavalry shows up. And then the cavalry, like, fights the Celestials and their, like, emissaries or whatever. And then Doctor Strange and all the magic users conjure a spell that makes them go away. Is there any way this is happening prior to... Well, no. So, the Celestial goes away. And then uh, everybody is like, woo, drinks her at Tony's. So then they all go to Stark Tower where uh, everyone is. And Stark's basically like, hey, everybody, listen. We don't get a lot of wins, but we've, we handle that flawlessly. That was awesome. Like, I can't believe... Usually when we all get together, we fight, and that totally sucks. And yeah. nobody likes that anymore. <laughs> but it worked out really well for us. And hey, big clutch uh, move from the Inhumans, who apparently, like had a really great battle strategy for some reason. Uh, what's going on? And then they all tell Tony, like, actually, it's because of Ulysses who can see into the future. And Stark's like, well, you can't see into the future, though. Well, okay. Couldn't their answer have just been, well, we have Karnak. Right. And he found the for- the fatal flaw in their plan. It's really that easy. great. Karnak can do that with everybody. Yeah. Well, he can, technically. Like, that's his thing. Yeah. I also love He's Ulysses. A nitpicker. I love Ulysses' costume for being in here. Oh, as being a dude in a, ten, in a in a undershirt with like the very cliche necklace and the ripped jeans. That's how you can boots. tell he's in his twenties. You know, I'm like really deep. <laughs> yeah, I listen to Depeche Mode, and this is like 2015. So like, you know, I like them because of the music and yeah. not because of the time. No. So 
Stark's like, no, we can't see the future. Hey, wait, uh, young time displays Jean Grey. Use your magic or mutant powers and look into his head and see what he's going to and see. She can't see anything. She's like, that's weird. Don't worry, that won't come into play later. Wait, really? Yeah. Well, no, what? That's not like a... Oh, it's just a joke. That it should totally yeah. makes sense. No. So then uh, Stark is like... Wait, does he have black and red eyes? When he looks into the future, yeah. Okay, that's like what robots look like. Yeah, I know. But uh, it'll be really cool if like he was actually a robot or something, but he's not. Don't worry, we'll find out what happens to Ulysses. He gets a little wrap-up at the end. So then uh, that was like a flashback... And then it catches up to the free comic book day issue when Thanos kills War Machine. Right. Uh, so maybe like it was like a week before Man of the Last Days of Magic, but more likely not. Because trust me, during the Last Days of Magic, all of those characters are really busy. Yeah. They're really busy. Yeah. Yeah, they're really busy in that fight. Yeah. Getting rid of a Celestial. So start. And then the Celestial's like, ooh, magic. And then he sends the. The problem that makes the magic go away. Stuff, right? I don't think I'm going to punch works. everyone on this couch. <laughs> that isn't me. Damn it! I was hoping you'd forget <laughs> that last part. I'm going to punch everyone on this couch. Ooh, but me. Good. So Stark goes to uh, where everybody is that is beaten by Thanos. And they're all having momentarily... like They're all getting like patched up. Right. And Stark's like, Carl, if you used Ulysses, then you're just as guilty for killing Tony or, or uh, Rhodey as I am. Uh, as, as, as Thanos is. Like, you've killed my friend because you used Ulysses and you shouldn't have because he's unreliable and seeing the future's bullshit and, like, you should just... We should just deal with the problems when they show up and not try to circumvent them because, like... Okay. Because that's my position in the Civil War, but too. But it's Rhodes' choice. Yeah, but, like, grow. I didn't know about it beforehand and if I had, I would have maybe, like, told him not to do that. And, and also I recalled would... the suit. Because I can yeah. do that by remote. Exactly. Uh, but he's an adult. I know. He's an adult man. I know, but he doesn't. He, but everyone acts out of character for this event. Oh, so they right? can do that. Listen, Carol Danvers is like religiously re like dedicated to using Ulysses. And I don't mean like she believes God told her to do it, but she's like, I have to listen to Ulysses. Even though everyone like works really hard to like prove that his visions don't come true. Is she the head of S.W.O.R.D. at this point or not yet? Uh, I believe she's the head of Alpha Flight. That's it. Or at least she becomes that at the end of this. Okay. But yeah. So then She-Hulk comes out of her coma long enough to tell Carol that Stark is full of shit and that she should keep going. And then she flatlines, and you're like, "Oh, don't worry, she's fine." We go to where to to New This Attila. is like a shitty soap opera. I very yeah. much, yeah. Well, Ben. Is yeah, there. that's right. Someone's in a coma. Yeah. Someone died. died. Now, who's gonna have someone's baby? We Unfortunately, don't nobody has a baby. Who has amnesia? <gasps> oh, that's a good question. Do uh, they don't have amnesia? No. Uh, but uh, if we want to do a do a flashback, Carol gave birth to a baby once, and that baby was the man who knocked her up. Yeah, what? Yeah. No, that and that's really that's like a that's a that's it's a sore a, spot. That's a sore for, spot for a lot of people. For Carol Danvers fans, for women, and for like Avengers fans. Yeah. Yeah, because the, yeah. the Avengers are like, woo, a baby, this is great. And the X-Men are like, whoa, Carol, do you want to stay with us while these creepy people all like get over themselves? It's messed up. Anyway, yeah. so uh meanwhile at New Attilan, uh Stark breaks in and he wants to kidnap Ulysses and like scan his brain because he can't just knock on the door during business hours and like ask him to come over and do it because he knows the inhumans are gonna be like, No, he's inhuman and he's like blessed and this is his power and you can't it's it's offensive for you to try and test it. Or at least that's what he assumes. So then he shows up in Ulysses' bedroom and then Minusa tasks him and then he beats the shit out of all the inhumans because they're all easily beaten up by Iron Man and then he kidnaps Ulysses and takes him back to his house. Oh, amazing how he couldn't have seen that and stopped it. Right, exactly. Who's playing Skyrim? The inhumans go to the Triskelion and call up, like, everybody. Like, everybody that's there, like right. Carol and S.H.I.E.L.D. and Black Panther and they're like, Tony Stark declared war on the Inhumans. You want to stop a war from happening? You better help us out and go arrest him. So like everybody goes to Stark Tower, and Stark's like, I just scan like while he's talking to Ulysses, like and keeping him awake, he's, his computers scan his brain so that he can like look into it and see like what's going on. And Ulysses is like, I don't know what's going on because Ulysses isn't a character. Yeah, he's yeah. nobody. He's a plot device, like Layla Miller was in uh, House of M. Yes. Literally, in House of M, Bendis creates a character that can advance slow-moving plot lines. In this, Bendis creates a character that can advance slow-moving plot lines, but the whole thing is a slow-moving plot line. So, unfortunately, Ulysses is not as interesting or cool as Layla Miller. Also, Layla Miller gets redemption, and Ulysses does not. Be oh. So, uh, the what about Michelle, though? Does she get redemption? You know, I don't know about Michelle, and I don't read in humans, so I have no idea. So then... Uh, 
everybody shows up and there could be a fight scene holy shit but then ulysses has like a vision and he like now he because his, his powers are always evolving and oh what does that mean so his, his vision like he, he can project his vision into the heads of everybody around him no he's just he, mysterio now right he casts illusions but they're, they're gonna happen or something so he infects their minds with this vision of the hulk killing all of them and at first i'm like cool ulysses is full of shit and he's making them think that these are going to happen. But no. Right. Uh, so they have this vision of the Hulk. Meanwhile, by the way, the Hulk is not the Hulk anymore. Bruce Banner can't become the Hulk. Yeah, it's Amadeus Cho. Well, Amadeus Cho hasn't become the Hulk yet, but they did cure Bruce Banner of being the Hulk. So did at this point, Bruce his, Banner is fixed. Did he spend his nose He out? does know that. But he doesn't know what Bruce Banner is up to at this point, so he moves him... While uh, Greg Pak is doing his own thing, he does something totally different with uh, Bruce Banner. Huh. So, uh, so okay, wait. So, do most Inhumans' powers continue to evolve? Uh, no. Does his evolve because they were getting boring? He, well, he, he, well, Ulysses has many powers. <laughs> yes, like Bomber. No, Ulysses uh, needs his powers to evolve for him to do what he does at the end of the story. And for him to, like, keep exacerbating the situation. No, he's already sucking. If that's his power. He's it, like Kess on Voyager. Ah. Uh, Is he going to explode into energy and push this book far away from us? He might as well. <laughs> yes. <laughs> In a way. Bruce Banner is, like, on a farm somewhere. And he's doing some science. And Iron Man and Carol Danvers show up. And they're like... Hey, Bruce. And he's like, hey, guys, what's up? And they're like, you got to come outside with us. And he's like, why? What's going on? And they're like, he just, just let's go. So he comes outside and the Marvel Universe is there waiting for him. And he's like, what's... The world outside his window. Yeah. <laughs> and he's like, what's going on? And they're like, listen, we all got like mind whammied by this rando. And he says, you're going to turn into the Hulk and kill everybody. And he's like, but I'm not the Hulk hmm. anymore. And also, so we brought everyone so you can kill us. Yeah. You don't do that. Also, we brought everyone so that like we can make you pissed off and freak out. Also, this is the exact same scene as the scene from New Avengers Volume 2, The Sentry, where Bob Reynolds gets woken up and then he becomes the Sentry. And he's worried that, like, because the Sentry does great good and the Void is within him and that Void does great evil, uh, he doesn't want to become the Sentry to keep the Void from doing anything. And then the entire Marvel Universe, everyone in this scene is everyone in that scene, and they all stand outside the Sentry's house and then make him become the Void and the Void attacks them. So it's like, oh, that's going to happen all over again. Except I don't think he's paralleling his stories. I think he's bored and he was a staff writer for this and that he just wrote shit that he already wrote. I think that he was just phoning it in. Mm -hmm. So they all uh, face Bruce Banner and he's like, this is horseshit, I'm not the Hulk anymore. And then it turns out that like Beast and Iron Man and everybody are like hacking his files and it, and it looks like he's experimenting with, with gamma radiation again. And he's been experimenting like on himself and he's like, guys, I needed to do that in order to make the Hulk go away. Like, you no. Know, and they're like, oh, like where there's smoke, there's fire. You're going to fuck it up. And he's like freaking out because his friends and allies are all accusing him of doing shit that he hasn't done yet. And it's like, oh, here's the fallacy of the Civil War too. And then out of nowhere, he gets an arrow to the face and he dies. And everyone's like, what? How could that happen? Also, if the Hulk was like shot or right. killed... He yeah. would turn into the Hulk, so clearly he was never going to be the Hulk. I remember us reviewing this yeah. one. Yeah. So it's why. Hawkeye. Hawkeye's hiding in the trees, and he shoots the Hulk uh, in the face with an arrow because the because Bendis retcons that one time Banner comes to Clint Barton and he's like, "One day I'll be the Hulk," and so here's a Hulk killing arrow that I designed that you can kill me with if I ever Hulk out again. Nope. And so he uses it to do it because from like a thousand yards away in a tree far away behind an entire crowd of colorful superheroes who can project energy he saw bruce banner's eyes turn green a little bit and so he thought he was gonna hulk out and he killed him and he maintained up to the last time he saw him that he definitely saw green in his eyes even though if you look at every version of the story uh the colorists put no green in his eyes yep so it's like why did he do that 
I just didn't like Bruce Banner. Right? Like, it's either yeah. he didn't want to. I just wanted to know, would this really kill a Hulk? Right. And I'm like, who else am I going to use it on? He yeah. said it's a Hulk killing arrow. There's only one way to find you can out. use it on Red Hulk when he's being a dick. So oh, anyway. He said uh, a Hulk killing arrow, not a Red Hulk killing yeah, arrow. And the arrow he, yeah, exactly. And the arrow he gave me has a green tip on it, not a red tip. Yeah, I'm no. not going to shoot Jennifer. Yeah. She's, She's already in a coma. <laughs> so that, yeah. That would just be a dick move. Right? <laughs> just point blank in front of her bed. Okay. Bonk. You know, Ooh, oh, it worked. <laughs> this just feels wrong. I should Gross. <laughs> so then, like, he gets arrested. Actually, he, bring, he gives himself up, and then he gets arrested, and like a, he and he participates in the fastest public trial I've ever heard of in my life. And uh, I mean, if he just pleads guilty, then he does not. He's like, well, I did kill the Hulk, but like he was going to Hulk out, and they're like, there is no proof that he was going to do that. And he's like, I was pretty sure he was going to. And the jury's like, yeah, that sounds about right. A qu- like, free! <laughs> so. Wow. Well, he was becoming a monster. Yeah, he was turning into a monster, though. Well, so, did they hold the trial in New York? Because you know how many times the Hulk has trashed New York? Yes. No, let this man go! <laughs> yes, and I he think they definitely... Your, throw him a ticker tape parade. Yeah, and they're, and literally, like, he he wins, and everyone's like, woo! And then like, the jury carries him out on the, on their shoulders. And yeah. And celebrates it. They all buy him a drink. Was Jennifer the accusing attorney? It would be amazing. She's in a coma. She has a conflict of interest. Actually, she flatlined, but she's still... Oh, yeah. But she is in a coma. Uh, So, then we have this montage of... Actually, it's like a a back and forth. Like, we watch the trial. And we have a montage of Carol using Ulysses to thwart different crimes uh before they happen you know like they're catching black cat they're taking down modok there's like okay a heist of wall street or so, something wait so initially we're using Ulysses to stop thanos which is a potential world, world ending problem. event yes okay right? yeah right that's that's like I get a once in a lifetime situation world ending event also you know killing oh, the, the hulk. celestial also well yeah the celestials oh and yeah. the hulk killing everybody yeah right okay. i mean that's just self-interest right there right fair well right. i'm just saying like the first two like okay that's a real problem yeah like, and like that they... saves everybody like screw your politics it's worth it it's the ends justify the means yeah like even if he never shows up if thanos doesn't show up and we were there for a little bit all right fine whatever but right. he did show up so i eh? killing the hulk what yeah stopping black cat <laughs> well that's the slippery slope is that carol's using it for like everything and she's also like what kind of deli meat should i put on my sandwich today? and you're like oh use turkey no not turkey <laughs> <laughs> and then he makes everyone think that they all want a ham sandwich <laughs> <laughs> so What's frustrating is for me. Okay, so for me, with with Civil War Two, the worst part is they start like trying to use it. You know, they they're, they're trying to use it like pre crime. You know, in one order report. Yeah. And right. for me, and the Inhumans, by the way, love it because they're like Shield likes us, and like they're not fighting us or dealing with us. Like what? we're having no me- we're, no X Men problems. But shouldn't they have a problem with it because we're using an Inhuman? Yeah, but like it's making us look real good. The problem I have, and it's the problem I have with pre-crime and this, it's a person. Like, it's not like a machine or an algorithm. Yeah. Although Stark actually winds up mapping his brain and then looking at it, it turns out that his brain reveals that he doesn't have, like, a power that taps into, like, the mystical forces of anything. It's like an algorithm that calculates the probability of any event that goes around him and then turns it into data that he can, like, process as being a vision. So when he saw Armageddon, he's just like, eventually humanity will lead us here. Right. <laughs> or eventually Thanos will show up and do something. Or whatever. But, like, as it turns out, that's wrong, too. And we'll get into why in a minute. But, like, that's why. Well, it's a percentage. But, I mean, like, yeah, you know, it, was, uh, it said it was 33%. Yeah. So the problem is, it's a guy. Like, if it was a machine, it's like the machine, like, you can plug in and it'll be around forever. Or we can update it. It's a guy. Who, like, if he gets heart disease or, or, like, gets hit by a car, like, he dies. And then, like, your whole fucking judicial system just falls out, like, falls to the wayside. Like, if you predicate every... It's like having a dog that can solve crimes. You don't, like, deputize him and, like, make him part of the whole judicial process. Because, like, it, he li- he lives, like, only, like, maybe 10 to 15 years. So you like, use him, but you don't replace the judicial system that's with the, thing, the dog. But, like, the, the, what, can you imagine, like, 20 years after the dog's dead? Like, whoo, wish we had that crime-solving dog. Like, it would really solve a lot of problems. Like... You become reliant on it. It's like, it's like having a you know a machine that can solve all your problems, but it's made of cheese. Like eventually, it's gonna go bad, and you're, it's fucking stupid, and it is fleeting. Well, can he? Is he influenced? Like he's a person, right? Right. So, like, he so he should be influenced. Yes. 
And that's the idea that, like, I mean, even Adam Warlock dispelled good and evil so that he could try to use the Infinity Gauntlet. Ulysses is just a 20-something asshole who wears a hemp necklace. I guarantee well, I you, say, look, he, is, he, is, he is biased. You have to bang me, otherwise the future is totally screwed up. My, my balls will be blue. <laughs> Because, like, all right, so you got the Illuminati, right? They yeah. were doing, like, they're like, we got to get rid of this. We right. The Illuminati is another Bendis idea where it's like, and by the way, every time they try, they fail. That's what I'm saying. Now, so it could be that Bendis is actually brilliant, and in this, it's like, it's it's bad. It's all stupid. It's just, it doesn't work. And, like, inevitably, this kid's going to, like, grow older, and he's going to get, like, you know, like, I don't Jaded like Jaded, or, yeah, or have I'm pretty opinions. sure I saw you doing something. Yeah. And since nobody can prove I'm wrong. Yeah. Share that vision with us. Oh, I don't need to. Yeah, don't worry about it. I've got that it's one. Fair here. enough. We've got here. we've got written legislation on the books that says if Ulysses says this, it's real. Right? I mean, like, again, I get the, like, hey, I saw Thanos. Right. That's why you, like, deputy, that's why you make him a member of the Avengers. Right. And you make him guard the base every time. Right, but you let people like Tony Stark and Doctor Strange and, like, any other mutant psychics take a look at him and yeah. help him to figure out what's real, what's not real, and, yeah. like, figure out how it all works. You don't just go like it, it'll be fine. Yeah. Don't uh, don't the Inhumans have any psychics other than Ulysses? Right. How about Karnak looks at him? Well, Karnak. Karnak does work with him and train him. Right. And but... that's where they discover that like he can actually like he has he has more powers and stuff. And so like through the training and and meditation with Karnak, he's able to like focus it better. Because right now they're kind of generic. And then they get more focused shouldn't... as they get more specific. And as he like works with Carol and, and shouldn't and... Karnak be able to be like. Here's something that's wrong with you. Yes. He should be like, oh, it's broken and stupid and no. Probably. But he's not going to because he's an inhuman and he's under strict orders from Medusa and Black Bolt to be like, no, we have to promote this guy. She-Hulk wakes up from her coma. She's cool. Yeah, well, that's her new design when she becomes Hulk in the new series Hulk where she has post-traumatic stress disorder from her like experience and so she's like afraid to Hulk out and turn into like who she is. But that series, I think, got canceled now, so like she'll be back to normal oh, soon. The book is beautiful. Hawkeye is acquitted, and he gets freed, just as She-Hulk wakes up, and she's like, ooh, that sucks. Uh, exit She-Hulk from the rest of the book. Um, they... Oh, good. Karnak uh, gave Ulysses some stripes. <laughs> yeah, he like wears stripes now, like Karnak. Because he's like training with him or something. Uh-huh. That's his so, war paint, you know. What's great is, uh, then there's like the subplot about this girl who... Is a regu- seemingly a regular person, but it turns out like maybe she's according to Ulysses, she's like a sleeper agent for Hydra, and so they. Uh, nope, they, you missed the boat on that one. Yeah. It was Steve. <laughs> yeah, so they arrest her, and then like they get this bomb out of her, like or out of this case that she had. They open the case; it's empty. It was it was a plant. It's fake. They they got bamboozled, and uh, I'm sure if you read Captain America, there's more information about that. But uh, okay, so. Ulysses was wrong once. Yes. And they didn't be like, scrap it. No, they should, but they're like, oh my god. And then Stark goes to everybody, he calls everybody, and he's like, including Carol and Steve, and he's like, here's the information I got. Mm -hmm. Ulysses is an algorithm, and he figures out like the probability of things, and he was wrong. What do we do, Cap? Because I was in one civil war where I disagreed with you, and it was bad for everybody. So what do you think? I really want to say face now. Yeah. So I want to be the good guy. Now what's hilarious is he's like, well, what do you think, Cap? And Cap's like, Carol, what do you think? And it's like, you, and you're like, oh, this is cool. But Cap's Hydra. Right. So he's going to want to do whatever helps his agenda. So Cap, so, so Stark learns the right lesson at the fucking wrong time. <laughs> How tragic. Uh, so then he's like, Carol, like, what if his readings were only 98% correct? Or 60, or 40, or 10, or 4%. And she's like, I would never do anything differently. Like, I am all in on this. All in. And so would Rhodey. Oh, come on. And Stark's like, what the fuck is the matter with you? And she's like, you're not the only one who loved him, you know. She's like, I'm being written by someone who just wants to write a story. Yeah, who needs me to be the bad guy in this All story. Right, so... And what's the problem is, this is like a character assassination for Carol Danvers because she is wholly unsympathetic and doggedly wrong. Me mean kind of how, like, Tony was unsympathetic in the first Civil War. Yeah. Except Look, we need a good guy to be a bad guy. Yeah, because that's how this works. So... Look, Carol kind of never... Grant, okay? The South didn't win! <laughs> Carol, I don't think, has recovered yet from no. Civil War. 
So she leaves. She goes like she crashes the ceiling, and starts like cap. Am I wrong? What, what what's happening? It's not her call. Like she can't just say that like this is the future. We need to work with it. And Beast is like, but it's your call, right? And he's like, shut the fuck up, Beast. You're such a goddamn hypocrite. And Cap's like, I don't know, man. I don't know. Is yours? That's why I'm asking a group. I'm not making the blanket decision. Yeah. And so, by the way, they're keeping the Hydra lady in S.H.I.E.L.D. custody on a helicarrier. Oh. For not having a bomb. Yeah. And then Tony and all of his rowdy friends show up to finally, about three or four issues in, start Civil War Two. So Carol knew that Stark was going to do this. Maybe through Ulysses, but probably just because she knows that Stark's going to do this. So everybody that works with Stark shows up, and Carol calls in her buddies, the Guardians of the Galaxy. So it's Carol, S.H.I.E.L.D., Alpha Flight, and, uh, and Guardians of the Galaxy versus th- and like the, some... the young X-Men and the Avengers. Right, and then like on her side, though, like they've got two Icemen there. Yes. There's an ice man on each side. Yeah. So they're going to cancel each other out. Right, exactly. So Who cancels out four? Nobody. <laughs> uh, Angela. Yeah, that's true. I'd actually like to see Angela versus Thor. It's barely in this. Oh, there's Dodge Strange doing magic. Yeah. And magic doing magic. Yep. Just like he can't be. Yep. Wait, so who's Spider-Man going against? Because Venom's down there. No, uh, he does fight Venom, though. He's just avoiding things. And it's funny because, like... <laughs> Venom is Flash Thompson at this point, and yeah. he's like, "Who are you? I'm Miles. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm a Spider Man." He's like, "You would like, Spider Man would never do this." He's like, "Hey, another person telling me what Spider Man wouldn't do. Thanks a lot. You're all have fun." Zap, <laughs> and uh, I like that a lot. But they're but they're also like the Inhumans are like, "Oh, we gotta protect Ulysses because Ulysses is next." So there's just a big silly slap fight where they all just like battle each other. You mean Hawkeye just doesn't assassinate Ulysses? Right, he should. Arrow. But Hawkeye, no, Hawkeye's like so sad he just leaves. Yeah, but like his wait, sad? He killed Bruce yeah, Banner. But he feels bad. He didn't want to, but he knew he had to. It was the right thing to do. Okay, if you feel bad about it, that means you accept punishment. You don't try and no. get yourself acquitted. No, yeah, you plead guilty and go to jail. Yeah, if you're like, no, I killed I killed a friend. Yeah. Lock me up. Yeah, an unarmed man. Uh, he had arms! He's yeah. like, well, no, I feel sad for a little bit. Then I'm going to feel better. All right. Being free. Especially after a couple of drinks. Yeah. <laughs> he's not, oh, yeah. I don't remember if he's drinking anymore. He's, he shouldn't be. So they're all fighting, and Ulysses is at Nuitillon, which is in uh, Manhattan, so you can kind of like see like all the devastation happening. And so he's like, oh no. And then he like extends his powers at them and forces them to look at another vision. By making... What? By making... Like, like ribbons? ribbons? Yeah. So he's stealing Angela's power. So is he magic? No. No, he's not magic. Because you know what his powers look like? They look like that coloration. Mm-hmm. They look like Lucy in the Sky from yeah, Runaways. from the Runaways. Yeah, it's not. So, so he's an alien, alien right? Yeah. That'd be cool. He's not. So then, I'm not inhuman at all. <laughs> so he forces everybody to see this vision, and the vision is of Miles Morales killing Captain America on the steps of a devastated Capitol building. Yeah. Which I guess at the moment is fine because Cap's a fucking Hydra agent. Yeah, you can say Nazi. It's all right. They don't know that. So for everybody else, they're like. Spider-Man's going to kill Captain America. Right. And this really kind of will reinforce both sides. Because Miles is fighting against the Visions. And so he's got a vested interest in being like, Ulysses is wrong. <laughs> and the guys on the on the other side are like, he's going to kill Captain America. Right. And Cap's so, like, yeah, that's true. And Cap, and, well, and Cap sees something they all don't. And we'll talk about that in a second. Oh, that's kind of cool. Is that in here? No. So, uh... Oh! So Carol's like, my, like oh, Spider-Man, I'm sorry. Sense. You're under arrest. I have to arrest you because you're going to kill Captain America. You mean they you're just going to kill me right away? Right? No, thanks a lot. I appreciate it. Well, I was like, oh. <laughs> and then he gets away and Iron Man... He and, gets away? Yeah. Yeah, Cap... Spider-Man gets yeah, away. Captain America stops Carol from arresting him and then he gets away. Cap's like, no. Like, why would he do that? Why indeed. So uh, Miles gets away, and this makes the, the, the you know both sides like fight a lot. But then Doctor Strange uses a lot of magic, and then they all teleport out of there. And Thor, uh, I think, grabs Miles and like takes him away. And she's like, "I'm gonna take you to a safe house." And he's like, "No, just leave me alone." And he like freaks out because he's just a, he's basically a teenager, just like 
I killed Captain America. Right. And because they all had the vision and they all were there, they're all like where they should be, more or less. And so Miles was in the place of himself. So he got to like watch himself kill Captain America. So he's like dealing with that image. And the Inhumans like go to Ulysses and they're like, what is your problem? And he's like, oh, I am beyond you. And you're like, oh my God. <laughs> what? <laughs> Meanwhile. <laughs> and the Inhumans are like, oh my God. Oh. Meanwhile, the Guardians of the Galaxy ship blows up after the fight and so the guardians are stranded on earth and all the and now we get some rich amazing stories about the guardians of the galaxy hey they do great at monsters unleashed they do but <laughs> everything else sucks so uh, stark uses one of like nick fury's secret bunkers like he did in civil war 2 or like captain in civil war 2 civil war 1 okay and so they all like hide out and they're like what are we gonna do about carol and carol's just like sad She's like, I don't want to do this. I'm sympathetic, right, everybody? I'm not a, I'm not as bad as Tony was in the first Civil War, right? Everyone's like, shut up. So then... Uh, I'm realizing I did the wrong thing. No. Except I'm not admitting it. No, she doesn't realize that. So then uh, it's great because then Miles is 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 reported sighted because they, he's, he's off the grid. They're like, where is, where is he? He's on the steps of the Capitol building. And he's like, bring it. Like, come on, future, let's do this. He wants to prove he's not going to do it. Right. So then we get treated to Andrea Sorrentino art in yeah. Old Man Logan's future. And Ulysses can now teleport himself into the futures that he sees. And he meets up with Old Man Logan. He saw this? Yeah, he's seeing Old Man Logan's future. And he's there now. Wait, from the current book or from the From original? before he leaves. And it's technically part of the current book. Because uh, Wolverine slash Logan kills one of the Hulk clan. Mm-hmm in this scene and he references things that wouldn't have happened in the old man logan book in the, okay in the, the original yeah. the old old man logan book so it's the it's the new okay story it's the jeff lemire old man logan universe uh but old man logan basically implies or overtly says actually that tony stark pushed her too far and that's kind of like what led to a the inhumans leaving earth forever and b his future from happening and he's like, you got to warn them. And don't worry, we don't have to worry about that. Then, for the third issue in a row, we waste two full pages showing you the exact same image of Spider-Man killing Captain America. Don't forget. Never yeah. forget. And by the way, it's a great image. And never surrender. But, thank you. <laughs> that's, two, that's six full pages out of three issues where we've seen the same image. Yeah. Not from a different angle. Same freaking image. So, uh, Ulysses is like, tell me what's going on. But he's like fading and he's being pulled back into his reality. And uh, and and, we'll, and Logan is like unsubtle. So he's like, I don't know what to tell you. And he leaves. And uh, uh, Spider-Man is on the roof of the Capitol, or the steps of the Capitol building. So the, cop, the DC cops all show up and they're uh -huh. like, put your hands in the air. And then Captain America shows up. And he's like, stand down, everybody. And he's like, Spider-Man. Why is everyone listening to Captain America? They don't know yet. No, but like everyone defers to him like he's the president. I know. But he's Captain America. He's Captain America. He's better than the president. He's Captain America. Look, guys, listen to me. I've got everything under control. All right. Tony, listen to Carol during this meeting. Uh, Carol, don't arrest Miles. Yeah. Miles, I'll talk to you. Except, well, and the funny thing is, real Cap would be like, no. Like he wouldn't be doing any of this, but he's Hydra Cap. But Bendis doesn't know that, no, does he? No. But Bendis is writing him poorly. So it works out. It's part of the retcon anyway. Is there any way that the, these two work together? There is no way that these two work together. Uh, I'm sure that Bendis knew about Nick Spencer's plan because Spencer wanted to do an event after this. And they all go to the same writer's retreat. Right, right. So they probably did know. So maybe, and I'm willing to give it to Bendis, he was trying to at least somewhat sow the seeds of this into here. I will tell you that he has more respect for Nick Spencer's story than he did for Jonathan Heckman's Secret Wars. Right. So Cap and Spider-Man are like, we're not going to do this. Like, we're not, I'm not going to fight you and I'm not going to kill you. So like, let's prove that this isn't going to happen. We're, we're going to be cool, right? Yeah. Then Carol shows up and she's like, Miles, come with me. I'm not going to arrest you. I'm going to put you in protective custody. And huh. then... That's just arresting with a nicer yeah. cell. So then she tries to like reach out to touch him and, he, and a, a, an impenetrable bubble is around him and she can't get him. Created by Iron Man, who was wearing a cool War Machine esque armor. Oh, I thought oh, wow. it was going to be Scarlet Witch. No, Iron Man created an energy field around Miles, unbeknownst to him, 
keeping him from being able to make that vision come to fruition. Basically, both sides are making decisions for the affected parties, and maybe Iron Man is admitting that there is some truth to these visions after all. Uh-huh. Well, there is some truth to them. Yes. So then uh, Iron Man and Carol fight for the rest of the issue, because, like, that's the that's the Civil War. Right, but, like, she... Isn't her power, like, she absorbs others and then can push back? Energy, them? yeah. But, like, she could also... But, like, yeah, but she's shooting energy now. Yeah, well, but... Because, like, he's shooting her with energy, so she's absorbing it and then redirecting it. Right. I guess he should just shoot her with bullets. Or punch her. Yes. Well, so they all fight and they all punch each other, and Miles is like, <laughs> of, is, "Is like this is this is horrible." Like, also, like, let this down. I'm running out of air. <laughs> it's, it's an energy thing. You could probably breathe through it. But uh, then the Inhumans show up, and everybody shows up, and they're all like, "What?" And then Carol like basically does the same thing to Iron Man that Thanos did to War Machine, and like punches them so hard that they die. She kills Tony. Yeah. Damn. And, while they're fighting, Ulysses like uses his dumb powers to like affect everybody around him, uh, around him, and he's like gonna show them the future, and he's showing them like the futures of Marvel, of like what's gonna happen, and so he shows them Monsters Unleashed. That's that's pretty close to what happens. Kind no no nope. no it's not. And then he shows no, them no it's not at all <laughs> like, an X Men event, and he shows them Spider Man killing Captain America, and he shows again. Them... But look at Cap up there. Yeah. So. Yeah. Dun, dun, dun. Yeah. Then Ulysses is greeted by Eternity, the physical embodiment of the universe, and he's like, "You're part of the greater cosmic landscape. You can see into the future and stuff. Come with me." No. And he's like, "Okay." So like he poochies up this book, and he's like, "I must go now." My no. So then he like. Wait. Yeah. He's Wesley Crusher. Yes. He he goes to the Traveler, and he like fucking leaves. What? Yeah. He's a. Freaking Elder God? Well, he's like, he's like, you're part of, like, you're like a new thing. You're a new idea. You're part of this new thing we're doing. And you look like a Dragon Ball Z character. Yeah. Kind of. And he's like, cool. And then he bails. And so the the alternate vision of the future is the Capitol building's wrecked and Spider-Man's holding the dead body of Tony Stark. Then we find out that Iron Man didn't really die and that Iron Man was, like, experimenting on himself and he put himself into, like... Do you, do you see how he's holding him? Yeah. It's like the Pietro. Yes. Gorgeous. It's also invoking the image of death holding Captain Marvel in the death of Captain Marvel. Right, which is Which is the same thing. <laughs> but for Marvel fans, they're like, oh, that's that. And it's like for art fans, like, it's actually not that. <laughs> but uh Oh thank God. I thought it was just someone holding Jesus. <laughs> well it is. That, that's what the Pietro it's is. Mary holding Jesus. Okay, I don't know what that is. <laughs> uh, <from the laughs> so I guess I've seen it. Yeah, you've seen it. I didn't know what it was called. So, uh, Iron Man put himself into, like, a kind of, like, dormant state, and Carol, like, puts him underground. I'm sorry, is he in a healing coma? Yes. He's in a goddamn healing coma! He put him in a healing coma. But he's a man. But he's a guy. Yeah, but, like, after extremis and everything, he's been, like, experimenting on himself, so he can actually, like, go into, like, a state of sleep mode. nobody showed up at his house to confront him since he was experimenting on himself? Yeah, right? Good question. Yeah, how come he didn't think that was really hypocritical and then not do that? So that ends, and then later we're gonna get the like after this event's over. Whoa, whoa, what? Oh, this so, is so this that, is the end? Yeah, yeah. They put her away. Oh, and the president's like, "Hey, Captain Marvel, like you win. You want to do whatever you want. Here's a blank check." And you're like, "Who gives a shit?" So what a shitty end to this. That's, yeah, it's, it's a shitty book. It's a shitty ending to a shitty book. But uh, I love the thing that's cool about it is that. Hydra Cap is like everybody saw that Spider-Man's gonna kill me but while they were all focused on my death I saw Hydra flags everywhere I win and I don't care if I die because I win like Hydra took over America and so I know that my I know that what I'm doing is A. correct and B. gonna win so I don't care as long as as long as my as long as my ideology wins then my my body can 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 fuck off. I don't care. So then, and you're so like, oh, then that's U- cool. Ulysses was really looking into the future. Yeah, and his powers are kind of like cosmic as well. It, can that happen through Tyre Genesis? No. Bendis thinks so though, because Bendis tried to retcon that the Beyonder from Secret Wars, 1984 Secret Wars, 
uh, was actually a mutant that went through Terragenesis, and the combination of a mutant going through Terragenesis turned him into a cosmic being known as the Beyond. Rather than dying, so like all like of them. The like they would, yeah. So is, uh, is he saying that... But then they write... But then yeah. Is was he like, saying no. that Ulysses is also a mutant? No. No, no, because... Hickman retconned that, and he's like, that's, that's horseshit. That's just the story that he made up. What really happened is there's a race of Beyonders, and he was a child Beyonder, which is why he made up a childlike story like Secret Wars. Like, it was just a, no. Okay, these Noto pieces are really pretty. They are great. I would like to get a couple of them, like, enlarged. Yeah. Embiggened, if you will. Embiggened. But yeah, uh, Civil War <laughs> Two by Brian Michael Bendis and David Marquez. Great looking Very pile nice of crap. Look at. I'd love it if the last visions that we see of yeah. like all those different possible futures where yeah. we're like, but the Bruce is dead and Iron Man is dead. What's all this shit? It's like, no, that's the future because Marvel's not going to let these characters die. That's right, because <laughs> no one dies. By the way, Spider-Man was on the cover of every single issue. He is not in any of them. Oh, Peter Parker. Yeah, Peter Parker Spider-Man. He's there like during when, uh, when, when, when Hulk dies. He's like, ooh. And you're like, oh, cool. But... To carry on the noble tradition of Civil War books, a Spider-Man is central to the event. You know, like, Peter Parker gives away his identity, and this one, Miles Morales kills Captain America in a vision that makes everybody wow. freak out. Wow! And by the way, I think he is a good writer. When he cares. When he gives a shit. When he cares. So, this is not... Uh, this is, like, so, like, as though he were writing it, and then he was like, and then this happens. And then this! Well, or, well, well, but, but, like, where are you going to go from there? Nowhere. Well, I mean, like, all right, so like, he can see into the future. Okay, so, cool, whatever. How can he prove that, that he's actually seeing that? Well, he can put it in their heads, too. But wasn't his power that he could just look into the future? It's also this. It's changing. And he, th he shoots out, like, future mind ribbons. Yeah. Okay, wait, is that connected to the being able to see thing, or is that something new? Oh, it's something new. You know what? That's an excellent question. Oh, keep reading. I don't think Bye. I'm going to do that. Yeah. What really quit. screws me up is the fact that in order for this to work, in my mind, mm -hmm. for Carol to believe in Ulysses so much, is that she should have ignored Ulysses' vision and then lost Rhodes. Right. She shouldn't have followed the vision and lost Rhodes yeah. and then been like, no, we have to keep doing this. For Brody. Like, no. Yeah, exactly. She should have ignored, she should have listened to Tony. Yeah. And then Rhodey died. And that way, the both of them are like, wrote, like you know, Stark's like, you can't blame yourself. These things happen. And she's like, no, but we could have prevented it. We could have it. stopped it. That would have been conflict. That would have at least been a connected thing where they both are on two different sides. And also why she's so, like, pro-Ulysses like pro -Ulysses and anti, like... Stark or whatever. Yeah, I guess. Like, or or anti-not using Ulysses. No, I guess anti-herself. Mm. Because she's very much not herself in this book. This is true. Yeah. Amazing is that this guy shows up and he's essentially like... He's the universe. He's the universe, right? And he's like, there's so much more than just Earth. You know who knows that? The Inhumans, the Guardians, Doctor Strange, The Magic, Avengers, the and Avengers. Tony Stark, he would literally on the Guardians. Like, like, everyone knows this. Yeah, but he's trying to say, like, don't... You're, you're wasting your talents. Is there a potent... Is, is it possible that he was seeing other universes... Yes, that he's like tapping into the multiverse. Right, and that's what Eternity's telling him. That you're not seeing visions, you're looking at the multiverse. Yeah. You jackass. I mean, that could be. Which but they mean, don't say that. And how does that help anyone? Right. Well, because I can grab the multiverse <laughs> well, and just bring it here. It doesn't help anybody. It, it's just that that's a power you have. Oh, well, thank God. How does turning into an evil red gargoyle for, for help Michelle? But here's the thing. Well, she always wanted to be a gargoyle. It doesn't look like it. The hero here... Is eternity. Yes, for taking <laughs> Ulysses away. <laughs> and being like, there is so much more than Earth. Come with me. There's nothing. There's nothing. <laughs> don't, worry, don't worry, I'm gonna kill him. I'm gonna push him into the sun. <laughs> and then humans are like, hey, you're on the fucking universe. Oh, and do you, something. You too. <laughs> next men you can do more stuff. Here you go. Here you go. You know, and the keep... Fantastic Four can be part of it too. Yeah, and, and you know what? Just keep Lockjaw. He's fine. Yeah, he's kind of fun. And you know what, Lockjaw, you're a guy now. <gasps> you poor thing, I'm sorry. <laughs> I can bang my wife! She's but dead. I can't lick my own ass. <laughs> so in one book, Thanos, <laughs> Celestials, and Eternity yeah. show up. And they're all used wrong. Because Bendis doesn't understand or have any respect for any of those characters. <laughs> they're literally, they're these cool, epic, big Marvel ideas, and he doesn't have any idea what to do with them. Because Bendis writes about lawyers 
who have like double identities, who have like a shitty life. Yeah. yeah how he, come like uh, Jennifer doesn't show up again? She woke up from a coma again. Yeah, because yeah. she, she got scared. She's like, oh, I can't go outside or fight anymore. This is a mess. Yes, Ben is right. A killer Punisher book. <laughs> Except I don't know if that's true either, because his ultimate punisher is garbage. Anyway, Civil War 2! Pick it up! I'll, I'll put a link in the description box below this video for you. Grab a copy of this? Don't. Don't do that. You know what? No. Uh, you if you want to, here's the thing. If you want to read it, it's done. Wow! This is Bendis at his best? Newsarama.com Well, we had to say something. And at least comics fair. verse visually stunning. Yeah. Yes. It's gorgeous. It's really pretty. What and about the writing? I said it was visually stunning. Visually, visually stunning. stunning. End of quote. Like our set. Thanks a lot for watching, everybody. We'll see you guys next week with another all new episode of Back Issues. I'm Sal. I'm Ben. And I'm Tiffany. So long.